morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. It's a bit steamy in here because it's a bit steamy in here. It's raining. I've just taken the dogs for a walk. I thought I'd do a quick video because I've been having a chat with one of my guys who is supporting our first traumatic brain injury patient through the early stages of the process, the game, the journey, however you want to put it. Is it simple? Is it complicated? Is life simple or is it complicated? Well, life is incredibly simple if you appreciate the fact that at our core, we are animals, base animals, gifted, cursed, with a higher state of consciousness. What have we done with this higher state of consciousness? We've created a civilized <laughs> society where the machinations of the machine take precedence over the needs of the individual. Humanity is lost, but we will find it together. So, trauma. Trauma is a fascinating subject. Trauma is subjective. The effects are objective. What is the complicating issue? We go back to it. Psychology. Our psychological makeup determines our future. Does it? Our physiology determines our future. Our psychology complicates things. So, trauma. We're not talking about trivial trauma. We're talking about real trauma. Our guys, our guardians, who expose themselves to life-threatening situations on a day-in, day-out basis when they're on tour. Now, lots of our guys are wounded up here. Is it up here? Psychology versus physiology. Now, I've always thought that, funnily enough, you should not be okay with killing somebody. You should not be okay with having your brother next to you die in front of you. You should not be okay with witnessing the atrocities of war. It doesn't matter how highly trained you are, you should not be okay with it. Now, that's probably a controversial statement to some of you guys, but it doesn't seem like a controversial statement to myself because I'm all about the namaste. But it's for the greater good. It's for democracy. It's for mm, lots of reasons. You can make a justification, but... Should you be okay with killing somebody? It doesn't matter about the rationalization for the act. Should you be okay with this? I don't know. But these guys place themselves in harm's way for you to protect your freedoms. Freedoms, COVID, freedoms, freedoms that are being taken away from us. Scary times, but let's not go there. Vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, fresh air. Controversial, not controversial. Protect your immune system. Have healthy male androgen levels. You will be strong. Fit to fight. Fit to fornicate. That's what we should be promoting. 
vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and fresh air, and healthy hormone levels. There is too much misinformation. We are constantly distracted from the truth. As soon as we wake up, we are distracted by something else and that creates fear and uncertainty and we are no longer able to critically think, trust the government, trust them, they are doing best by you. <sighs> so, psychology, important, but physiology is more important. Now I've been learning about trauma recently and the polyvagal theory. This idea that we have the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and relaxation, and the enteric nervous system. These are autonomic parts of the nervous system. They are motor components. They are basic, they are primeval. Now our understanding of the autonomic nervous system is evolving, much like human consciousness. Um, so we now understand the role of social engagement and the importance of the parasympathetic nervous system in this process. Now let's just take a little bit of a side step. Erections. What are erections? Erections are parasympathetic. You are not supposed to be horny goat boy in a time of danger, fight or flight. There's no point getting a boner when you're faced with a saber toothed tiger. So erections, parasympathetic, rest, relaxation, social engagement, pleasure. Who doesn't love a bit of pleasure? Orgasms are sympathetic. A lot, a lot of people know that. Um, cool. Tangent. So, polyvagal. Sympathetic, fight or flight. Parasympathetic. Rest, relaxation, social engagement, pleasure. And there's another part. There is the dorsal vagal nerve. Now, let's go back to this idea that we are base animals. I'm going to give you an example. When a lion tracks a gazelle and grabs it by the throat, what happens to the gazelle? It goes limp. Tonic immobility. It is a survival mechanism. It is a survival mechanism when a animal is faced with a life-threatening situation. Now, what would be the point in the gazelle continuing to struggle with the lion grabbing its neck or its hindquarters? A lion is far more powerful. It is gonna kill that gazelle. So what should it do? Continue to struggle or go limp? Why would it go limp? Well, one theory is the thought that lions don't want to eat bad meat. They want live flesh to munch upon. Another thought is that facing certain death, what's the point in struggling? What they're trying to do actually is wait for an opportune moment to escape. Facing certain death, certain death, there is no rationalization in struggling. So they have this period of tonic immobility. They no longer feel pain, they no longer feel emotion. There is no point in being in pain or feeling emotion facing certain death. So it is a survival mechanism. Now what happens to these guys that constantly face 
these life-threatening situations that they are trained to do, but in reality, should they be happy? Should they be able to cope with these situations despite training? If we remember at our base, we are animals, the answer to this question is no. Now, trauma should be played out. But if you are constantly suppressing the natural cycle of life and the physiological reactions that should occur in traumatic situations, there will be a negative health outcome. Will it be psychological? Will it be physiological? So, the neuroendocrine system becomes dysregulated. And the fundamental part of my part in this journey to help guys in the UK is to normalise the neuroendocrine dysregulation so that psychological therapies can be effective. Understanding that trauma is a physiological problem, not a psychological problem. Life is very simple, but we make it complicated with this. We do not use it properly. Isn't trauma fascinating? It is incredible. We need to remember at our core, we are animals. If we have a problem, as with everything, to affect a sustainable change, you need to address causation. This is the key. This is the secret. So we need to affect a positive change to how these guys with traumatic brain injury and complex PTSD are dealt with here in the UK. So I'm delighted to announce that we are working with Mandy Boswick, a specialist trauma psychotherapist. We're going to make a change.